In this Throne and Liberty video, I bring you a complete guide on how to complete the level 50 co-op dungeon of Tyrants Isle and the boss of Tubalik. Let's go. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm the winner of my recent 1000 plus Lucent giveaway you can see on screen now. If this is you, hit me up on my Discord link down below to claim your winnings. Now, do you guys want to win 1000 plus a Lucent? Well, it is as simple as this. Drop a like on this video, leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subbed. I'll pick winners from the comments section of my Throne and Liberty videos and announce them in a couple of days. So good luck, everybody. So Tubalik is the boss of the Tyrant's Isle level 50 co-op dungeon. And in this video, I'll guide you and teach you about all his mechanics so you can defeat this dude with no problem at all. This guy also has some amazing loot if you use that longbow, if you use that staff, this guy is probably one of the guys you want to be farming. Okay, so starting the dungeon you can see the requirements on the right hand side of your screen. Defeat reptilians and then defeat the reptilian butcher. This is quite straightforward. Defeat any of the reptilians within this area completes the first of these two requirements. Then guys you push onto this part of this dungeon, this map, and you can see the reptilian butcher will be here waiting. Now there's one main mechanic here which you need to know about is when it goes invisible. When this happens, players need to gather around a luminescent coral and trigger it. The boss should follow and then be stunned out of his invis, allowing players to lay down more damage to him. It really is as simple as that. So when he goes in this, head to one of those corals, trigger it. Hopefully the boss is nearby. When it's triggered, the boss will come out of his invis. You deal more damage. Simple. After defeating the boss guys, then push on into the cave depths via one of the three entrances I believe there is to get into here. It's normally one per run. It can be random. Uh, so once you're in here, guys, you have new challenges. The first is defeating eight bloodthirsty reptilians. And then, guys, you need to defeat the bloodthirsty reptilian executioner who again you can't miss due to the boss marker on the map. So defeat the bloodthirsty reptilians and then head to the bloodthirsty reptilian executioner boss or mini boss. So with this boss he has one main mechanic you need to know about and it's like a fiery tidal wave uh, which you need to jump over as it comes towards you doing some crazy damage. Now you know when he's about to do this attack because he jumps backwards towards that gate and says I'll sweep you. He then does this attack it comes towards you, you jump over it, it's as simple as that, do more damage to him. Upon defeating this boss guys and completing the other requirements within this section of defeating those 8 bloodthirsty reptilians, the gate behind this boss should open up. But I have had a couple of instances where this gate doesn't actually open up. If this happens to you guys, follow the path I take on screen now to get over it, to pull the lever, to open the gate up for everybody else. Okay, so within this next section, you have to defeat eight more bloodthirsty reptilians, rescue two hostages, and then defeat the bloodthirsty reptilian gladiator. Now, the hostages here appear when you get near them, but you can see both locations on screen now. The 8 bloodthirsty reptilians are an easy target as these guys are everywhere. And then guys we have the boss of this section, the bloodthirsty reptilian gladiator seen by the boss marker on your map. Here guys, this dude is quite straightforward once you know what you are doing. So you will notice around where you fight him there are like those fiery beacons or totems. 
These are what we use to stun this boss. So what you do guys is lay down that damage on this boss until he jumps to the center in between these totems and highlights one player in orange. So what he will say here is I'll crush you. When he does this like I said he highlights one player in orange. That player who is highlighted in orange needs to get behind one of these totems because the boss here will charge towards that player who is highlighted in orange. If the player is behind a totem, the boss hits this totem and is then stunned allowing players to lay down tons of free damage. This charge attack though if it hits the player hurts a lot. So yes, if you are highlighted in orange at any time during this fight, make sure you put yourself in a position of a totem in between you and the bloodthirsty reptilian gladiator. Simple as that. Once you take this guy out people, you then need to head to that geyser and stand on it. It will shoot you up into the air, where here guys you need to morph into your glide and head towards this barrier, hopefully landing on top of it so you can progress. Then guys go to that next geyser where you basically go up, turn your camera around and head towards the main bus. So you're now guys at Tubelik, who I feel is one of the easier dungeon bosses in the game once you do know his mechanics. Okay so he has three main attacks, one where he turns you into a rat, the other one where he drops meteors on your face and the third one you need to avoid using those geysers. So as you start this, players must choose a particular flower. So before you even hit that boss, every player needs to pick a individual flower. Now these flowers are scattered around the arena and it's important players choose one and stick to it and you'll learn why in a second. So starting the fight, lay down damage on the boss. Eventually he will suck players towards him, turning them into rats. Here guys, you want to run towards your flower. Now the boss here while you're a rat will do an attack where he says try to dodge this. Now you need to bury yourself underground as the rat before this boss's attack hits you. So as soon as you hear him say try to dodge this you need to bury yourself underground and you do this by using your far left skill. Upon his AOE attack happening, press the same skill button again to come out of the ground and then you quickly, as fast as you can, want to get towards your flower. This will change you back into a normal player, a normal person. Now the boss here will chase one in particular player after doing that AOE attack as you as a rat come out of that ground. So again, run as quickly as you can towards that flower because if he catches you, he eats you and it's instant death. So running into that flower as a rat transforms you back into your normal player. Now with two players in that rat form run towards the same flower, only one will transform back as it's one per rat per phase. Simple as that. This is why it's important players pick their flower and know beforehand, before this attack even happens, which flower they're going to run back to. So yes, pick one flower, stick to it and run back to it when this attack happens. Simple as that. This is by far the hardest part of this fight but when you get it down it's actually really easy. So as you lay down more damage his next mechanic is dropping meteors around the arena. Here he normally targets a player or two and drops the meteors around them but as soon as you hear him say I'll throw you uh, he's about to drop these meteors on your face so just run around the area and trying to avoid these. If you're a tank you can take them obviously but other players may not be able to. So yes, as soon as you hear him say, I'll throw you, run around. Simple as that and you'll avoid these meteors quite easily. His third mechanic is one where he lights up the floor with a devastating AOE attack. This happens after he says again, try to dodge this. What you need to do here guys is to avoid this is run to certain geysers in the arena. The ones you need to run to you can see have steaming water in them, coming from them. Once you are in these guys you are thrown up into the air and you avoid this attack. Remember though when you are in the air use your glide because you will take full damage if you don't. If you don't run to one of these steaming geysers the attack will hit you and it's probably going to be lights out for oh, you. Yeah. Now there's normally two of these geysers that are steamy on the map so just run to the closest one possible doesn't matter how many players are in one particular actual geyser and you do have probably more time than you think to get to them so yeah. 
And there you have it guys, that's basically the boss's three main mechanics. He just repeats these in that order over and over. He does have a couple of other attacks you can easily dodge, but nothing crazy or that's going to kill you if I'm shot. So there we have it guys, I learned these three main mechanics and this boss will be a walk in a park for you. The first mechanic he turns you into a rat when you run back to that flower. The second mechanic is he drops meteors on your face. And the third mechanic you need to run into that guy is that a steamy guy is that to avoid his AoE attack. It's as simple as that. And there we have it guys, good luck with fighting this boss. Um, he drops some amazing loot. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, it really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.